Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop. I'm out in the Heavenly Backyard Garden. Some light rain is falling right now. This is Sunday, August the 4th, later in the afternoon, and I'm waiting for the new information to come in from the National Hurricane Center about Tropical Storm Debbie. It looks like it could be Hurricane Debbie by this time. How will this storm be affecting us? Well, one thing for certain, very heavy rains. We're talking historic rains to fall across southeastern Georgia and southern South Carolina. But there's more to this than just the rain. We have the winds as well and the potential for tornadoes. Well, let's take a look at the maps right now. Let's start off with the radar, first of all, out of Tampa, Florida. And there you can see the circulation center right over here to the east or to the west of Tampa uh, in the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico, where these water temperatures are in the upper 80s, even lower 90s along the coast over here. And uh, looking at the Doppler effect, uh, we can see here um, the velocity here just to the north of the uh, uh, Tampa Bay area around uh, Newport Ritchie. Uh, these winds here are estimated to be about 62 knots. That's about 70 miles an hour uh, just below hurricane strength right now. So the, the storm is definitely increasing uh, in intensity right now. Let's take a look at uh, another radar, the uh, local radar for, let's do Moody Air Force Base. Uh, that's the Valdosta radar, and we're showing bands of sh light rain uh, and showers across the upper portions of southeastern Georgia and into uh, southern South Carolina. And a uh, band of moderate to heavy rains are beginning to show off the coast of uh, northeast Florida and just to the east of St. Mary's uh, uh, in the uh, Camden County area of Georgia, Clinton County, uh, just to the southwest. Some of these are producing water spots over there in the uh, uh, coastal areas of northeast Florida, southeast extreme southeast Georgia. And there we're seeing the first major band of thunderstorms and heavy rains associated with Debbie moving in across the southern counties of Georgia right now uh, and into the northern portions of Florida. So uh, the rains are beginning already in the northern Florida and into southern Georgia and this is going to be pushing northward throughout the night but the bulk of the rain is down here over in the uh, uh, central portions of Florida near the uh, center rotation of the storm. And that's slowly moving northward right now at about only about 12 miles an hour. It's going to slow down even more. So this is the band of really heavy rains here that will be moving northward into our area, particularly late tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow night. We're going to see some showers overnight and maybe it is a couple of rumbles of thunderstorms, but most of the activity will be tomorrow, later in the day, and tomorrow night, and then a, a whole lot of activity overnight, tomorrow night, uh, Tuesday morning, uh, into Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday evening. That's when it's going to get really bad in southeastern Georgia and southern South Carolina. So let's take a look at the conditions, first of all, around the area, the um, warnings. And there's a lot of advisories, in effect, as you may expect, including flood watches across central Georgia all the way to the coast, central South Carolina all the way to the coast. Uh, we have a, uh, a hurricane special weather statements for strong winds and heavy rains. Uh, we have a tropical storm warnings, in effect, for uh, southern portions of uh, Georgia and a tropical storm warning, in effect, for the coast of Georgia, tropical storm watch for the coast of South Carolina. Uh, also, a high surf advisories in effect. The uh, surf, surf will be, uh, rather the storm surge itself will be about two to four feet. Uh, the tides right now are about uh, at, at evening high tides, 7.6, 7.5 feet. If you add two feet to that, you get 9.5. Flooding usually begins at 9.8, but it could be up to four feet, and that will put tides over 10 feet and 11 feet, which could cause uh, some flooding across the uh, tidal area. So be on the alert for that. And that's not so much for tonight, but for tomorrow. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. There, of course, you got a hurricane warning in effect for the Big Bend area of the uh, Florida area. Let's take a look at the um, uh, National Hurricane Center uh, forecast map right here. And here it is, uh, the 5 o'clock advisory <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, shows the uh, storm uh, just to the west of Tampa, Florida, in the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. And by 2 o'clock Monday afternoon, should be in the extreme northern portions of Florida, right near the Georgia-Florida line, just to around the Tallahassee, Florida area. Uh, and it's still a hurricane there. It could get up to about 85, maybe even 90 mile per hour winds before making landfall. And then, of course, as it goes over land, it will weaken because its, it's fuel supply has been cut off. But there's more fuel over here in the Atlantic Ocean that's going to be drawing into that. There's that tropical storm warning in effect for the coast of Georgia and tropical storm watch for the 
uh, coast of uh, South Carolina all the way up to uh, just north of Charleston. And uh, by uh, 2 o'clock in the morning Tuesday, it should be over south central Georgia. By 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Tuesday, uh, just to the north of Baxley, uh, around uh, in the Tattano County, in that area there, that's the center. And that's, you know, the storm is wide. It's not, it covers that area. But it covers basically anywhere in this cone, uh, we're going to have severe weather conditions. But here's the problem. We're over here, um, well, Savannah and Brunswick, St. Simons, uh, uh, Claxton are uh, here, and, right there, and uh, um, uh, Baxley over here. This is the northeast quadrant of the storm and, and the eastern quadrant of the storm. That's where you have more of the adverse weather conditions in a tropical storm. Possible tornadoes will be in this area throughout Monday night through Tuesday, and uh, the threat for tornadoes will be uh, evident across this area uh, as the system approaches. So that's going to um, uh, cause additional problems uh, with the storm as it moves on in with the heavy rains. Well, speaking of the heavy rains, the forecast, quantitative precipitation forecast, is calling for incredible amounts of rain to move in across uh, the uh, the region. Uh, this burnt orange area that is uh, 16 to 20 inches of rain. Seems like the uh, the uh, the uh, rain totals have come down just a little bit over the last 12 hours. The forecast. Uh, not quite as much at one time. This was in the purple here, 20 to 30 inches. But uh, still, the forecast is calling for, well, if you're in the orange area, that's just too much rain to begin with. In the red area, that's 12 to 16 inches of rain. And the burnt orange area, that's 16 to 20 inches of rain. And that includes Savannah all the way out to Statesboro, uh, uh, up to um, uh, north of Clyle, uh, uh, into the Savannah River, and across all of uh, southeastern South Carolina. Uh, extremely heavy rains, and this is going to cause major problems because it's not going to fall in one hour. No, it's going to fall over two to three, maybe even four days. And this, all this rain is going to be accumulating in the rivers, and that's going to produce major river floodings across all the rivers across southeastern Georgia and southern South Carolina. Um, and, and, and this is going to continue for uh, not after the storm passes through, but well after the storm passes through, those waters will be continuing to rise across, well, particularly the Geechee River, the Altamaha River, uh, the Savannah River, uh, into the Georgia areas, uh, the Canoochee River. All these rivers will be well above the flood stages. So if you live near a river, watch out for that. And I wouldn't be surprised to see if Morgan's Bridge and King's Ferry, Morgan's Bridge 204 out there by Ellabel and King's Ferry right there at the Georgia, I mean the Georgia, the um, Chatham County, Bryan County line. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see the Ogeechee River overflow those bridges there sometime uh, in the middle or the end of this week as the rivers rise to uh, uh, extremely high levels with this catastrophic rain that is expected across our area. Okay, let's take a look at something else here. One other thing, I just got an alert from SEMA, the Chatham Emergency Management uh, Association, and they said that they will have sand and bags available at Lake Mare, but you must provide your own shovel. But uh, uh, sandbags are available at Lake Mare on Sally Mood Drive. Residents must, must provide their own shovel open to all Chatham County residents throughout the daylight hour. So tomorrow on Monday, if you need to build some sandbags, perhaps uh, put them on your front doors or anywhere where water could come in if you're in an area that is prone to flooding, uh, this might help save you a lot of grief if you can just put a couple sandbags up. And Chatham County is making this available for you. And then we have the wind. Uh, this is where I'm concerned. Uh, this is for uh, early Tuesday morning, about actually midnight, Monday night, Tuesday. Uh, the, the low is expected to be over uh, south central Georgia, right around the Valdosta area, the center of the low. But this whole area is going to be affected by strong winds and heavy, heavy rains. But here we have this fetch of wind, south east to east winds coming in off the Atlantic Ocean. That's what's going to be driving in the tide. Uh, and the tide's going to be affected by this. Now, at, at this time at midnight, the tide will be at high. It'll be reaching high shortly before midnight. So we'll have a high tide, but about 7.5 feet. But this is going to draw it up even higher. Also, this quadrant right in here, uh, that is the northeast and eastern quadrant of the storm. And that's where you can see the uh, greatest chances for the development of tornadoes. So uh, all along this area, particularly right in here, uh, is where you're going to see the potential for tornadoes. Now, with the uh, very heavy rains, the grounds are totally saturated. Uh, so the trees do not have as strong uh, a holding 
uh, power as they have with dry land. So with the winds being gusty and then throwing in some tornado activity where you can get a 100 mile an hour gust perhaps, uh, these could easily uproot trees and that will cause obvious problems with uprooted trees and breaking trees uh, for the power lines and of course road closures. And with all this heavy rains that I'm expecting with this system, we could see uh, road closures and road washouts possible uh, throughout the uh, middle of the week with the uh, continuation of the uh, deluge of the heavy rains that I'm expecting. Okay, let's go outside. Well, this storm certainly is going to be historic in some events, uh, particularly with the amount of rain that is expected to fall across our region. Now, I'll keep you posted right here on my YouTube channel throughout the uh, uh, events of this storm. I would like to thank all those who have supported my channel. I appreciate it very, very much. And there they are right there. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for supporting this channel. And if you'd like to help support this channel, get your name on the credit list as well. Uh, you know, I have links below how you can support my channel. You can buy me a cup of coffee. You could uh, join my a Weather in Nature YouTube channel, or you can send a special thanks as well. Or you can join my Patreon page. All these help support this channel. And I have several computers I use to keep my weather uh, website up and running. And uh, you know, maintaining of all this and the software and the service fees to some of these weather accounts and so forth all add up. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you for helping me keep this uh, website and this channel and my Facebook page up and running. Well, speaking of up and running, it's starting to rain right now, so I'm gonna have to run back inside uh, to stay dry. But you know, staying dry this week, that's gonna be the challenge, but the big challenge would be watch out for the rising water and the flooding conditions that will be prevailing across Georgia and South Carolina for not just the next couple of days, but the next couple of weeks, particularly with the rivers over the inland areas of Georgia as the water continues to flow back into those rivers. Uh, expect to see extensive flooding uh, with that. Anyway, anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.